welcome to Sex from A to Z. Um, hopefully we'll get better at this as we go along. <laughs> can only get better. <laughs> the bar so low. We don't, can't see the bars out of frame. Um, okay. Uh, sex from A to Z is a sex science podcast discussing in plain language the actual studies that inform how sex therapists, sex researchers, sex educators, and medical professionals make decisions about sexual health and wellness. On each episode, we take a deep dive into a different piece of peer-reviewed literature, break it down, and explore the social, scientific, and personal implications. This is a podcast for anyone interested in understanding the psychological, medical, and other scientific research behind sexual issues that impact all of us. All right, so who are we? Uh, (laughs) Sagittarius, I like long walks on the beach. I right. um, like my coffee. It tastes like hot chocolate. Um, I actually, actually don't like long walks on the beach. I always make that joke because it sounds like a personal dad, but I fucking hate the beach. So. And you live in Florida. Yeah. Well, I'm from Death Valley, so uh, it's not oh, like yeah. I deal with it. Yeah. I do like long walks on the beach. I've yeah. taken. I've done like the um, conference calls and just walked. On the actual sand? On the actual sand while I'm on a conference call. Like I, beach adjacent is fine. Like the ocean's pretty. Isn't the beach by definition? Like, oh, that's ocean adjacent. Okay. Ocean adjacent. Okay. No, yeah. I, I mean like like if there's like paved <laughs> spaces near the beach where I don't like oh. the sand sticking to me. Okay. That texture. It, it tends to do that. Is uh, it, it's flashbacks as a kid. My parents just made me go to the lake, like camping, like in the <laughs> lake and it's gross. And I just like, okay. I think it traumatized me to any body of water. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can see that. Yeah. And, and the ocean is as big as you get when it comes it's to bodies, to, of, water, bodies of water. But I just, so I all, I don't, I can't like enjoy the beauty of it. It's like just sticky and smelly right. and it makes your car stink. Like So anti long walks on the beach. Anti long walks. Okay. So who are we? Still Sagittarius though. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's my yeah. birthday. Yeah. Um, well it was, uh, uh, so, okay. Who are we? I'm going to let you start. I know it says A to Z, but oh. I'm going to let you. Wow. I'm going to let you. We're going to start with Z on this one. I see that. Okay. Z uh, A to Z. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm the Z. I'm uh, Dr. Rob Zeglin. Um, that's the only time I'm going to say doctor this whole time. Yeah. Um, I might say it sometimes. It's fun. Dr. Z. Plus it gives me credibility. <laughs> well, at least it gives one of us credibility. <laughs> I make my students call me Dr. Z because it makes me sound like an evil villain. I love it. And if you say Zeglin over and over and over again, it starts to sound like you have milk stuck in the back of your throat <laughs> and it's very unattractive. I, I did professor sex because it's, it also felt very like uh, evil villain. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Professor X wasn't a villain, but it just felt yeah, very Prof- like, yes. Mwah. Yes. Instead of stroking a cat, stroking a dildo, just, <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. I hatching a plan yeah, for $69 million. I get it. I really, the Volvo puppet. There's a, there's a lot of ways you could go. Uh, I am, what else about me? I'm a licensed mental health counselor in Florida. I'm licensed in a few other states, but they're irrelevant now. Uh, and a nationally certified counselor. So I'm a therapist by trade. Uh, my specialty, um, both in my research, because I'm a, an assistant professor of a clinical mental health counseling program here in Florida, uh, but my specialty in both my research and my clinical practice is sex and sexuality. And the way I summarize it, it like the way I often kind of say it is that if it deals with sex, I've either researched it or, or treated it, because uh, I still see, do see clients at a private practice. I do some other really cool stuff. Uh, I'm the director of C-Sherry, the Community Sexual Health Education and Research Initiative, which I know we'll talk about because that's kind of how we got started together. Uh, But it's a collaborative here in Florida of agencies, academics, stakeholders, Department of Health. We all come together, students, students every other month and talk about the sexual health needs of our community. So I'm a big fan of that. We'll put links to all that in the notes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Shameless self-promotion. Do it. (laughs) I'm also the editor of the Journal of Counseling, Sexology, and Sexual Wellness. Angel's on the editorial board for that. Uh, But it's the first peer-reviewed journal in the field of counseling for sexual health and wellness. So that's really exciting. Uh, I suppose that's for now it. Uh, There's some other stuff I've done um, throughout history. And I think one of the questions people ask me is like, how did I get into this field? Yeah, I was going to, yeah. Is that, do you want to do that now? Yeah, I mean, we can't. Oh, we can we can do that now. I no, you do yours first. Okay, and then, and then we'll, then we'll jump do. Back. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um. Okay. So who am I? Uh, Angel. I'm the A in A to Z. Uh, Angel Russell. Um, <laughs> I I'm love that one. name. So I put up sex from A to Z, and every person I've told it to is like, that is so clever. And sometimes I lie and take credit. <laughs> but allowed. usually I, I say <laughs> Rob, Rob came up with that. <laughs> no, effort. like you did that all on your It was really, I was so jealous when you came up with that. Was, like, there's no way I can top this. <laughs> so it was really good. Um, now, okay, so I'm the A in uh, Section A to Z. I am uh, the founder, creator, um, 
whatever behind <laughs> professorsex.com. The everything. The everything. Well, not anymore. I mean, I, I was. It was my my baby. It really just started because I was sharing a bunch of. Uh, so I've been doing sex ed for about eight years. Mm -hmm. Ballpark. And uh, I I was um, sharing a lot of like sex ed content on my social media, and I have family and friends who did not want to interact with that content. And so I was trying to find like a space where I could just do that. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't really looking for an audience. I was just trying to get it away from the people who didn't yeah. want to be in the audience for it. Um, cause consent matters. And so, uh, I was working, uh, my boss at the time, we were trying to come up with names. We're both super nerds. And so it professor sex was because of professor X. It was like, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's how that happened. Um, I can tell that story someday. Um, yeah. So what do I do? Uh, I teach sex ed. I do sex research which I love. Um, I which, do, does, which doesn't mean what a lot of people think it means. When no, you say do sex people research, are very disappointed yeah. when you say that you do sex yep. research and then you tell them what it looks like. It's yep. mostly statistics, which I had to tick twice. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm very glad I have friends who are good at math and that there's software for that. That's essentially like using a McDonald's menu. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, it makes me look smarter than I am. <laughs> so what is it, like the wizard behind the curtain? No, yeah. Yes. I, thank you, SPSS. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I do, I do sex research and I also do coaching and counseling so, or not counseling, coaching and consulting. So I'm not a therapist. I'm sort of the, <clears throat> not everybody who has questions about their sex lives needs to go to a sex therapist. Yes. That's like not everybody with fitness goals needs to go to a doctor. Yep. Um, some people can have their fitness goals met with a personal trainer. Yep. So what a personal trainer is to your fitness goals, I am to your relationship mm -hmm. goals mm -hmm. and your sex life goals. And some people are just looking for information on how to mm -hmm. be safe. They're looking for resources on therapy maybe. Yep. So I'm a good resource provider. I'm a good educator. And then if you're hanging out with me and it looks like you need therapy, we might loop someone in who does that too. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I do. And that's what yeah. I yeah, that's who I am, I guess. I think uh, people are usually surprised to hear me say that um, half, probably even more of the folks who come to me for the therapy side, within a session or two, I tell them, I I don't think, like, I'm, I'm happy to hang out with you, but I just don't think that you need the intensive kind of therapy. Um, you know, a sex educator was probably a better resource. And so I think folks are usually surprised that, A, that's a thing. Yeah. But B, that it's a better match for their needs. But I think it really is because so much and maybe it's a good segue into what it is we're, we're maybe aiming yeah. to do. I think so much of what people think are, is wrong with them sexually that they think they need therapy for. Yeah. It's really just a lack of understanding of sex and sexuality, a lack of education around it, um, which no, yeah, the title well, sex educator then is the remedy. Yeah. I think it's just there's confusion yeah. about like, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. It's it's sex education. Like, what is a sex educator? Mm -hmm. When we were growing up, it was like your health teacher or your history teacher, mm -hmm. whoever did the short straw in the faculty meeting, yep. got to do it. And got to. So there you right, got to. So there was not like this. Uh, and so sometimes I have people who go, oh, that's a thing. How can I do that? And I should just let you know there's no money in it. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I'm it was a little tongue in cheek, but <laughs> it's it's not the way to get rich. Um, but but yeah, it's uh when I learned it was a thing, I was like, oh, that's that's it yeah. for me. But partly yeah. just because I can say penis is a straight face, yep. and that's like the the first step. Yep. So that's the that's the uh, interview. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's yeah. And it, but I think the the barometer for me is I can tell that someone like it's the like it's some of those words like penis with a straight face or vulva mm -hmm. with a straight face. Cause that one, and we can, I'm sure we're going to cover this at some point, but just the difference between like penis being totally mm -hmm. fine on like Twitter, for example, but they tend to censor they censor vagina that has and vagina vulva. Yeah. Vulva, um, yeah well, vulva's like we that. should just, I'm going to just make a note <laughs> about like, uh, V for vulva. Word, yeah. V for vulva, which is like seven episodes. Yeah, someone will comment. Don't you mean vagina? No, I don't mean vagina. No, no, I need don't. the puppet next. I'm going to get the puppet. If we take a break, I'm Fair getting enough. the puppet. Um, okay. So how did we, um, how do we mean? Well, this is uh, this is actually one of my favorite stories to tell. So, oh, yeah. okay. did you do you remember? I, I do remember. Okay. I just want to hear you tell it. Okay. <laughs> so when <laughs> I moved, remember. because there's a part of the story that that I don't think I've shared with you yet. That's like an underside of this. Maybe I did. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. Uh, <laughs> so I moved to Florida with my wife in 2017, and yeah, she's here. <laughs> and um, one of the first things that 
I did was I went scouting for coffee shops because one of the places I do a lot of my writing, because a lot of people think of professors, most of our job is, is teaching and it is, but most of our time is spent writing uh, for our research. And so I like to write at coffee shops and bars, particularly if I can find an establishment that has both together. An outlet. Uh, and oh my God, that was our struggle yesterday was finding a place at out- outlets. But I went scouting for coffee shops and I found one in downtown Jacksonville. And so I walk in and I started chatting with the uh, person behind the counter and they asked what I do and what brought me to Jackson. So I started talking about it. And then she goes, oh, well, we have uh, Professor Sex come every whatever first Monday or whatever it was. Uh, and she does a little sex ed. Sex ed Sundays. No, there you go. Sundays, sex yeah. ed Sundays. And I, I said, oh, that'd be really cool. Like, I, I sh-, like she goes, you should stop by. And I said, absolutely, I will. Uh, but immediately I started to feel like envious that there was already somebody here. We've talked about that before. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. No, not that story, that, but that feeling. Yep. <laughs> that there was somebody, A, with the name <laughs> Professor Sex, and B, that was doing sex ed, like, uh, publicly or uh, for the masses, I guess, in Jacksonville, because that was something that I, I really wanted to do. Um, and so I, so part of me showed up to that first one to hope, I was to hope that you were terrible <laughs> so I could sit in the back and heckle. Oh, yeah. Right? And yeah. just be like, boo! Like the Regina I, George playbook. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I showed within 20 minutes, I was like, oh, no, she knows her shit. <laughs> uh, so I just kind of sat there and, and, and it was on, um, dating and using apps. Yes, we were doing the only dating one. I remember because I was like pairing people up and I Mm -hmm. was like, I don't even know if you people are dating, but you're going to be paired up with somebody because you're here. (laughs) Yep. Yep. And it was, it was, it was a lot of fun and and I was impressed. And then uh, I think we, I don't know if you forgot about me, but I kind of forgot about it because I got so busy with like starting my new job. But then all of a sudden I get this email from one of the campus centers for student, like one of the student campus offices uh, at the university I work at. And it's from Angel. And I still don't put it together. And then I show up at your office and we make eye contact. And then I'm like, like, oh, "Oh, shit, this is Professor Sex. I didn't realize that she had been working at the university the whole time. Um, And then we hit it off and had a friendship and kind of been stuck together ever since in in some way. I just stick myself to you. So I don't know if you've ever tried to shake me, but it's not going to (laughs) happen. You called it forced friendship once. I did. (laughs) Like, no, this is happening. So just just accept it. Yeah. But that's. that's Consent usually matters. But (laughs) you just didn't know. That's the story. That is the story. It's a good story. I like your version of it. Um, What's your, is your version? You were intimidating. Like you showed up and I don't know if somebody told me you were coming. I think the coffee shop owner told me that she mentioned that she met you. Okay. She's like, Oh, there's this new guy in town who's teaching sexuality at the university. Yeah. to which I responded with jealousy. And I was like, <laughs> so who funny. is this jabroni? <laughs> and so I was hoping you were a dodo. This is fantastic. And then you also were not a dodo. <laughs> and um, I was like, okay, well, we'll at least be friendly. Yeah. Like, I didn't Cordial. expect that I was going to force <laughs> our friendship. <laughs> yeah. But I, I did expect that we would at least get along. Yeah. And then um, we were, I knew you were new. And um, we were doing something at the center and... I was like, oh, we got to include. I actually remembered, like, oh, we got to include. Huh. Um, and, and, but I didn't remember your last name. I just remembered you were Rob. Okay. And so I had to ask for it a little bit. Um, but you're easy to, if anybody's ever met you, go, like, have you, do you know Rob? And they go, who? And I go, oh, like, uh, like about yay big and blonde, very good looking. Oh, oh. yes. And then they know, like, that's, that's literally <laughs> like, that's yeah, true. it's 100% true. <laughs> it's so well, funny. Like, you. every time, men, women, young, I, old, across the board, I like, that it. is the description. I appreciate that. So Thank you. Working as I, found you. I had a, I had a colleague on campus once introduce me to a stranger as, oh, this is Rob. He does all the sex stuff. And I'm like, I don't know this man, but like, I know the guy, the, all the sex stuff. I know the man who was introducing me, but this stranger just now knows me as Rob, the guy who does all the sex stuff. I, I think that's your title I, on the um, professor sex page it. now does all the sex all stuff. All the sex stuff. Like, I'm gonna add that because that's funny. Yep. And I want that on a shirt. It's also now part of my Tinder profile. <laughs> Rob, I do I all, all the sex stuff. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> uh, which, you know, again, lower the bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't say I did all the sex stuff well. I said I do all, <laughs> I all the sex, the sex stuff. stuff. Yeah. I um that phrase actually freaks me out a little if I if I have like a client or like a student who's like, Oh, I'll do anything. And I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe don't say that. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, you won't. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's a whole other. <laughs> Nor episode. should you. Yeah. <laughs> a is for anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clean yeah. my car. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, I I thought that was really cool. You yeah. showed up. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm always. It's like a. There's like a. It's like a desert for sex ed out here. Uh, and so Absolutely. meeting someone else who just yeah. cared at all about this, I, one of two things was going to happen. Either we were going to get along and we were going to work well together or yeah. we were going to, it was going to feel competitive Yeah, because that's what happens. This industry is so small and there's so few people doing this and there's so few people who take at least the sex ed side of it mm-hmm. seriously mm-hmm. the way they need to, that there's this like scarcity mindset around it. And so, so one or two things happen. It's like, it never feels like there are enough seats at the table and there are, yeah. but it can tend to feel like there aren't. And so I, I was worried that we were going to have that dynamic of either we're at odds yep. because we're always feeling like we're stepping on each other's toes. And I figured I would lose that because you were a PhD and mm-hmm. dude. And so I, you had a couple things on me sure. that really were high currency, especially mm-hmm. at work. Mm-hmm. And so I, Boy, I, and that fear was rarefied last year with oh, some things that happened. Well, that'll be we, a whole other episode on that. That's yeah. been fun. Well, we made the joke about um, some folks that we were thinking of sending the podcast to. And uh, Steve and I were in the car and okay. talking about, oh, it's a, and he goes, um, well, they'll probably take you more seriously now that Rob's on it with you. <laughs> and it was like a joke, but also like it, not, you know, yeah. like we could like that's a whole other thing yeah. to talk about. But I, I think this idea <laughs> of like... Um, like credentials and credibility yeah. and stuff yeah. um, is, is interesting and definitely something we can like talk about as we go on. Particularly within this field yeah. where it doesn't need to be that way. This, this mm. is not surgery. Like I, sex is o- o- extremely important, but it, when it comes to this type of content or this type of field, it's letters after your name are for me less. It just means that you have a very particular specialty maybe within sex, but. Uh, or that the application of your knowledge is specific. Yeah. 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 So like, so in your case, it means that you have the training and skills and, um, I do one accountability thing. process. Ne- well, you do more than one. You do all the things. <laughs> that's but, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but like your your training, open like that's where you fit in that in yeah. that model. So when somebody's building their support team, that's the role yeah. you can play in that space. I just play a different role. Yeah. But I do I do know where some of the like hesitation comes from with like there's a lot of internet sex experts. Mm-hmm. Sex experts. Mm-hmm. I hate that word. It's another one. Um, but this idea that anybody with a microphone is an expert is also like, and I think that's what, uh, I think that's what that's, you're fighting yeah. is. So, so I, I actually yeah. invite people and I'll, I'll even say this now, if we're saying something that feels untrue or feels like it needs to be backed up, send us a note, we'll send yep. you a link. We'll, we'll, you know, well, whatever, like yep. we'll do our best. Yep. But I, which is, which is in the spirit of what we're doing with the yeah. science side, science is always looking at itself and going, are we right? Yes. Are we right? Are we still right? Is this still true? Is it true now? And sometimes it's not. And sometimes it changes. Yeah. yeah. And okay. Well, that's good. That's such a good segue. Okay. So like, what is, what are we doing? What is it? No. Oh, yeah. That was well done. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, what, what, well, I think whenever you and I started talking about the idea, the thing that I really, really liked was cause there's a lot of really good podcasts out there for sexual health and wellness. There's, there's people doing really, really good work uh, in the podcast kind of sphere. I think one of the things, because you and I both kind of gotten to have gotten to know each other as scientists first in terms of identity um, that there's an opportunity, I think for us to help translate some of the science that's out there in plain language. Like, like it just, because I think I, I know I do it because that's the only way to get published, but academics write for other academics, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not accessible. It's not. It, it, it's, it's really hard for people to, cons- to consume. Yeah. yeah. I had to look up the technical term for scissoring a couple months ago because I'm writing a, a, an article with someone about it. And what is it? Tribatism. Tri- yeah, tribatism. Tri- tribatism? Yeah. Tribatism? I yeah. have a book. T-R-I-A-B-I-T-I-S-I-M, I think. Tribatism. tribatism. Yeah. It's the technical term for scissoring because I can't put scissoring in an article. And I think that's just. Yeah, I would put scissoring in an article I would too might... <laughs> but I was I, I yeah. just knew immediately it would get no that you've got you would a, have an editor a response and I, exactly and so I think our in my mind our mission is to take academic speak which is like you said inaccessible and very hard to consume and talk about these topics in plain language in a way that might be helpful and I think to critique the science because a lot of times there is bad science out there that's informing um 
policy or decision or, or programming or education or best practices. And when you really dig down into the articles or the, and the study structure itself, you realize, oh, man, this is not good science. And so I think for us, and plus we have personality and we're not going to, I think, hopefully be boring, that we can, we can add color to this too. I know, right? Uh, so that's my, in my mind, I think that's my pitch. No, it's... I- I love this because this is – so I um, I had a, an instructor in grad school who the first paper I turned into him, he said um, oh it read like a novel. Mm. Well, he compared me to an author. Um, I don't yeah. like the author very much, but it was – a, a good author. And and I was like, oh, thank you. And he was like, that's not a compliment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this reads like literature. It doesn't read like science. And I was so insulted because I thought like, oh, so it's fun to read and that's an issue. But that kind of was the issue. Mm-hmm. Like it, he, he was very focused on um, getting me to write like a scientist. I'm very glad for the editing process because – it is. It's a, it's a whole language. Yeah. And so, but, but what I love is I do have, so my background is um, literature. Like my undergraduate mm-hmm. is English lit. And uh, that, yeah. yeah. And so that, I mean, I had to untrain that. Like mm-hmm. it was not, mm-hmm. I thought it would be an asset. And I still think, I still think it was, I still think that it was an asset, but it was not interpreted by all members of my graduate school team as an asset yeah. because it's a totally different type of writing Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, different writing standards, different guidelines. And so I had to really unlearn a lot of habits or learn to compartmentalize. But what it, what it has done, because I do a lot of writing. I do like now I do a lot of writing for like, like pop media blogs. And I I did like a GQ piece. That was fun. Uh, So I've I've done a lot of writing that's mass media consume or mainstream consume. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I, I like the idea of taking the jargon and like, let's talk about it in yeah. words that humans use. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so I think that'll be fun. I also love learning. This gives me a chance to just like that from a personal standpoint. I like having the excuse to constantly be digging into the science in spaces that might be a little bit outside of where my research focuses are, you yeah. know, cause you tend to get in like a oh, yeah. tunnel oh, yeah. of like, I'm going to read everything that's ever been written on HIV or whatever. And yeah we talk about like the letters after your name. That's what that means. It means somebody spent four years reading everything there was to read on exactly. whatever their dissertation was or whatever their expertise yep. was. And then maybe they shifted gears and spent another four years on some other thing. And yep. so they're going to be like a walking, talking encyclopedia about that issue. And it's going to inform other things. But you know, this gives me a chance to sort of broaden. 100%. And I'm so selfishly, even if that's all I get out of it, I really hope it, y'all get something out of it too. But yeah. I'm very excited to get that out of Same. this. And that's what I was saying earlier about like, I do, I, like, whenever we were talking about like the credentialism in the field that the, like, like I know HIV really, really well. And that's even changing because of everything that you got to oh. stay current with it. Yeah. But I had a, a student come in that wanted to write a paper on HPV and I know enough, but, but oh, we talked about that, but yeah. not enough to do an article on it yet. And so she and I had to work together and, Bring me lit up review. to speed and do our like a little lit review again. And, and just so that I knew enough to write on it knowledgeably um, and to put my name on an article that was about it. Um, and I'm doing that constantly with different topics, but HIV is still kind of my focus. And that's what I mean by like credentialism really just means you're narrowing your focus. And that's not always a necessary, not everyone's coming to me for therapy about HIV. It's so it gives you that more chance to expose yourself. To yeah, it. no, I agree. Yeah, sorry, this is a kind of a so, the credentialism in our field is kind of a soapbox for me. I'm sure we'll. No, I think it's important though. Well, because people, what we talked about, people are like, why should I listen to you? Yeah. And I think that so I think it's important. Yeah. But also, I I think academia is very gatekeepy. Mm-hmm. I think academia mm-hmm. academia is not accessible to everybody. Mm-hmm. I think that standards for intelligence that are set by academia are not universal standards for intelligence. Yep. And so I, the last thing I would want to do is send some kind of message that, okay, here we're, we're going to present you with this literature. We're going to present you with the science. And so this is somehow like that it's somehow elevating. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, and it should, and I, and I think the scientific process should be elevated, but I think it's still humans behind it. Yeah. And so I think we want to be, do our best to be honest about gaps in science or reading or, mm-hmm. you know, not be too broad about what it could mean. Like the, I, when I talk to people about being like students that I have about being good consumers of the information that they 
uh, yeah. come in contact with, a lot of information is coming through social media. So mm-hmm. you're getting like a BuzzFeed mm-hmm. link that says, you know, everyone who eats chocolate orgasms twice as much or whatever. You know, you get some clicky bait hmm. sort of title. Wouldn't that be cool? That would, I know, right? Yeah. Um, but you get some sort of clickbait title and you get some write-up of an yeah. article yeah. and the write-ups are usually not great. Yeah. It's usually somebody who maybe didn't understand yep. like how, like really what was going on. Yep. And so, and it's often only based off the abstract, which yeah. an abstract is like four sentences that summarizes an entire study procedure. Um, and oftentimes those are just written about the abstract. Yes. Yeah. I, I, yes. And so, um, and, and, or people don't understand what a significant result means mm-hmm, in the paper. Mm-hmm. So a significant result and a result that, will actually impact your life are two different things, you know? Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that as we move through articles, like what is statistically significant mean? What does affect, what is an effect size? And like, how does that matter? Cause I talk, when I teach, um, this is my kink by the way. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Talk data to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) getting you a pin. Uh, when I, one of the things I teach, um, when I, I, I teach a lot of freshmen, and so we talk about how to read these studies and we talk about like uh, when we see a, a statistically significant result to something, that means that like in the math, we saw these differences. Yeah. But what we really should be looking at in terms of how does that impact me? Like, is there a discernible impact? Yep. Do I have to put this under a microscope to see it? Is effect size. Yep. And so then we go and look at the effect size and go, oh, like, okay, maybe. Yep. So like one of the things was um, that men... Uh, watch more porn than women or something, but then the effect size was much smaller mm-hmm. than the article had made it seem. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I've got some. I like the. I like throwing those stats mm-hmm. at people. Like, okay, look, we believe this, and this feels mm-hmm. true. And like, and a lot of that has to depend on how you define porn, too. Yeah, because also, there's couple, yeah. yeah, yeah. P is for porn. P is for porn. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we'll write these things down. P is for porn. Yep. I, this will also be fun. We have to make sure to cover every letter of the alphabet. I've been trying to think about the. We can do it. So yeah. okay, and yeah. oh, so that is actually a good segue into. If oh, you are, yeah. yeah, if you're listening to this and you are a scientist and you want us to look at your stuff or maybe you want to join us <laughs> yeah. and like talk about your research, send us an email. Yeah. Um, if you are listening and you want to hear more about the science behind a topic, mm-hmm. send us an email. Um, if you have suggestions for us on things we should be looking at, we're our goal is to um, every episode, we want to take a different piece of peer reviewed literature and break it down and talk about yeah. like the social implications, the personal implications. How does this inform medical practice? How does this inform therapy? Uh and sex is lives it, of people yes. just in general. And is this even useful information? Yeah. Yeah. We'll look at the dates of when things were written. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is also this idea that anything before 2000 is useless. That's also not true. Mm-hmm. Like, um, so we're going to, we're going to take a broader approach. Uh, we're not just going to ditch things based on date, mm-hmm. but we're going to keep in mind that like research on medical stuff changes really fast and terminology changes yeah. really quickly. And so we're going to look at some yeah. of that. But if you're listening and going like, Oh, I'd really like to hear more about this. Like, please email yeah. us. All the links are at, um, it's professor backslash podcast. And that'll be the links to the YouTube channel. That'll be the links to where you can find the episodes. Oh. Um, so yeah, you can listen in the car or you can watch our pretty faces on the, the tube of you. Right. And they, they can um, watch one pretty face and then me. Oh. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll do, we have both. Um, we're going to try to do two to three episodes a month. Um, I'm not going to commit to a day of the week. That'll be a surprise. You're welcome. Um, I just don't want to overpromise and under, under deliver. Yeah. Well, that's why people need to subscribe. So they just get the notification, right? And they don't yes. have to. Yeah. Subscribe and you get the notification because it's going to be a surprise to us too. So <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, when you said, oh, Angel's on the editorial board for the journal, I just felt like that cringe of embarrassment because I'm texting you last night going, when was that review yeah. due? Is it a few today? It's today. Yeah. Yeah. Which was great because I thought it was last night. And I was very sleepy. I feel like I've done it, but yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> so I just, deadlines are, um, yeah. some people get annoyed by last minute. Yeah. I think deadlines are there for a reason. Yeah. Like if it, yeah. if you wanted to do sooner, tell me sooner. You, because you, <laughs> you bring up a good point. We've been using the term peer reviewed and since you're yeah. doing that, it might be helpful for us, I think, explain what, what we mean and how science works. Because this actually mm. is, a, is a timely conversation because I was just having a conversation with somebody. I was at Disney the other day and somebody asked a question about... Most wonderful place on earth. It is. <laughs> and on Facebook, someone had... Uh, po- made a post about um, the ban on gay and bisexual men and donating blood. Mm. And I pointed out 
that the ban isn't on gay and bisexual men. It's on men who have sex with men within the last 12 months. And then somebody commented about, well, that means they're gay or bisexual. And so I had this conversation. Did you do your favorite fact? So I did. I did do my favorite do fact. Do it. Do the favorite fact. That 75%-ish of men who have sex with men are straight, which the person then got into, uh, that's not true. And we started having a conversation. And then I shared an article with him. And he had a hard time understanding, I think, the what I was sending him to. And then it occurred to me, yeah, there's no reason for him to because this is like – it's a different world. And so then I had to like say, okay, well, this is, this is what I sent you. It's not like an answer. It's, it's a link to an article, what you have access to is the abstract, blah, blah, blah. And then I realized that, that there were, I think that he and I were, were talking two different languages. And so to help bridge that gap, he and I then had a broader conversation about the scientific process yeah. and how science gets published. And so I, I like invited him into that space. So um, let's give it, let's give everybody a little, like a, uh, yeah. like a little, uh, cliff notesy. Well, we don't get paid for our research. A lot of people think we get paid. You know how disappointed my family it, is when I tell them that we don't, well, I'm like, I was telling my brother, yeah. I told my brother yesterday, like, Oh, you like, cause I was, reading your article I was like in, like in the waiting room with my brother or something yeah. and I was he's like what are you doing I'm like homework <laughs> and so, like it's yeah. due tomorrow yeah. um but uh so I, I thought he would be like really impressed and he wasn't not impressed <laughs> if you're listening to this I get it but like he wasn't unimpressed but he's like oh how much are you making for that Nothing. Like, the labor of love. Yeah. Sci- scientists, we don't, or uh, faculty, we don't get paid to publish our research. We we sometimes get paid to conduct the study, like if we get grant money. Uh, but in terms of publishing, we don't get paid. It's not like publishing a book. We don't get paid for publishing our the work. The journal gets that money. The journal gets 100% of that money. So a journal, and there's a couple that we have here, I guess, Sex Rules and Archives of Sexual Behavior. I love Archives of Sexual Behavior. Uh, but there are journals for every topic in the world. And journals are a publishing space that researchers can submit their work to, to hopefully attract attention from that journal editor and the editorial board and the editor and the editorial board like it and decide, you know what? Yes, we're going to publish it in our annual journal or biannual journal or quarterly journal. Then the journals come out annually, biannually, however frequently the journal wants to come out. Um, Like mine, JCSSW comes out twice a year. It comes out every spring and every fall. We'll put a link the, to that in the notes too. The, oh, cool! I yes. like that, uh, and it's open access, so everybody can uh, download all the articles. That means for it's free. not behind a paywall. So yeah. sometimes the stuff you have to pay for access. So you either pay for a subscription to the journal, or if you work for an organization that pays for yep. journal access, you get it as part of your job, um, or you can pay per article. Yep. Like if you want, which is um, astronomical. It's ridiculous, and that's part of that's another benefit of what we're doing yeah. is we're helping people at least. In the information we're providing, we're giving them access to things they may not have access yeah. to. It's like seventy five dollars. Um, I think I think the guy on Facebook said it was seventy five dollars to download my article. Yeah, I was it's like, it's not the, worth it, and I don't yeah. get any of that money. No. Um, yeah. So go ahead. I, well, no, I, no, no. Yeah. It, so the way that it, so think about a journal as like a magazine, and the stuff that's published in it comes from researchers from a, just across the world. We, whenever I look, let's let's say I finish a study, I will submit it to a journal for review. And that journal then sends it to experts in the field uh, that don't know me and that I don't know who it gets sent to. So and your name isn't on it. It's frequently. Some journals do different variations of that, but f- usually, usually it's, it's, it's called double-blinded, meaning I don't know who the reviewer is and the reviewer doesn't know who wrote it because my name will be stripped from the from the article. Um, and you it can't gets, go find them if you don't like the review. Exa- no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and the reviewers, you know, read it and see if it's – sound, if the research was well done, if the study was well designed, they look at the implications to see if uh, what you're writing is based in theory and is in line with what the journal is trying to accomplish. Really, it's it's a rigorous process. There are some of my articles that um, go through like four or five different review stages. We get rejected all the time. Oh, yeah. uh, it, rejection is just part oh, of research. Is, yeah. Like and, the biggest, one of the biggest parts of research. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You just got to get At used to it. every level. You got to get a thick skin. And so I've had one study that was rejected from like four or five different journals. And then I finally realized, you know what? Fine. I'm just going to rewrite the section that everyone seems to hate, even <laughs> though I loved it. You take it, you get attached, take it uh, personally. It's a baby. Those are my babies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I rewrote it and it got accepted into the next journal. But that peer review process <laughs> is what is supposed to keep good science or to keep bad science out of kind of this, the of being published. And so peer review process is what defines science that when I write an article or a manuscript, it doesn't just get published automatically. It's got to go through several stages of review by experts in the field. 
And Angel is a member of the editorial board for the journal that I'm the editor for. And so she's one of the experts that if an article comes in, if, if a researcher sends me an article on something that I think is within her specialty, I'll send it to her. And she's one of the ones who um, comments on it. And then I send those comments back to the author. Um, and then they get to decide whether or not they want to make those edits. But if they if How they, attached they are to, the, exactly. <laughs> to their process. And at the end of the day, if, if they send something back that it still isn't good, we reject it. And, and so that's how science works. So anything we cover or we're going to talk about in this podcast, I guess, I think maybe folks should know, has been through peer, A peer review, review process. it's been published. Yeah. Um, and, or it's written by a field expert yeah. or it's a write-up of peer review, but we're going to, yeah, I am. Um, I don't see a straying from that. Yeah. Um, and if we do, we'll let you know if something we're talking about is not, is an exception to that. We'll make that very clear yeah. for yeah. If, if that comes yeah. up. Um, mm -hmm. cause we do want to stick to that standard and that's important. And I will say that, a, that on the flip side, peer review is only as good as the peers, right? So, um, one of the, one of the major criticisms of, the scientific process like largely and academia largely is it's a lot of like old straight white dudes. Yep. And that's just a lot of the climate of especially older academia yep. is it's very white and very male. Yep. And yep. so review boards that are more diverse are giving people access to science that covers more bases mm -hmm. that, that is more inclusive, that is more affirming. And so when we're looking at, some of the sex research we're looking at is going to use language that's insensitive. Like we're going to post links so you guys can come find this stuff and we're going to do our best. You may not hear that from the way we talk about it, but when you go read it, oh, you saying. might see like, yeah. oh, some of this language is really heavily yeah. gendered or yep. very cis normative or yep. very, um, ugh, it sounds a little, maybe it's older and the language is rough. Um, yep. And things will change independent. Some journals do a better job at having a more diverse, um, like, editorial board and mm -hmm. some journals are still catching up. Um, yeah. And sex research especially has just taken such interesting turns throughout the years, like what people thought was important to research in the days of Kinsey and Masters and Johnson and what we think is important to research now has just yeah. vastly shifted. Yeah. And so I think it's all important. I think that history is important and we'll do our best to contextualize it. Mm -hmm. But also just as a disclaimer that some of this stuff may read as insensitive yep. because it may be insensitive. Yep. And some of this stuff is written in a time where we didn't have the language we have now for things. And so we'll, we'll do our best to, but we're asking, I'm going to ask for a little bit of grace or understanding of that, mm -hmm. you know, to say like, Oh, it's not all going to, it's not all going to read like the articles themselves. Yeah. The articles themselves are not all going to read in a way that yeah. feels great to everybody, yeah. you know, and that, that happens. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. Cause Journal, yeah, I like the way you worded that. Journals are still trying to catch up, I think, in a lot of ways because you're a victim sometimes of the editorial board board terms because an editorial board member can serve for a certain number of years. Uh, and those editorial board members are the ones doing this peer review. And so you you sometimes have to wait for a position to open up and then you go out and you seek more diversity. Um, I think that's why for JCSSW, I, diversity was one of our top priorities. It's, it's very clear. It's I, I hope so. Thank and you. And you can yeah. check the editorial board out. Like if you went to the website should, yeah. of, any um, well, any journal. Yeah. yeah. They'll say who's on the editorial board at any given time. Um, and so you can go check out and see like, oh, who's reviewing the science, mm -hmm. you may not see who reviewed the actual article you're yeah. reading, but you can kind of get a sense of like who was on this board. And sometimes that can give you some insight mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the language you're reading or into gaps or into what, why did that sound so forward thinking and progressive? Oh, look at that board or whatever. Yep. So I, it, it is kind of well, a little insider baseball. Like it's kind of neat to see how that sausage is made, I guess. Yeah. But um, I think that's, the, that's our goal is to to, yeah, exactly. I think that's part of what I want to do here is I tell my students all the time that times have changed. Professors nowadays, we're not, we're not the holders of knowledge spilling it on to students anymore. I have access to the same articles my students have access to. I just go on the university library website and type in an article. So it's not about having access to the knowledge anymore. Um, and if folks have the access. I think the way I try to teach, and I think part of my motivation for this too, is to demystify the process a little bit yeah. and to help take some of this and put it in the language that people can um, appreciate. And, and also distinguish it from other types of writing, like getting an article. So we're going to do an episode on, on anal sex. We call it B for butt stuff. <laughs> and if I'm reading an article on butt stuff from Teen Vogue or an article on butt stuff from Cosmo or like a pamphlet on butt stuff from the health department yeah. or like sure. a scientific... Um, like a study on why certain people engage in butt stuff. Those are all very different types of information yep. with very different goals and very different levels of 
it's some are less rigorous than others in mm-hmm. terms of the kind of information that that gets through. Cosmo is not rigorous. Well, you know, although I, Teen Vogue has been really doing their homework. Hey, so good. Teen Vogue is a great resource. Pornhub too. They've yeah, been, they've they have like the better, sex yeah. ed thing. They, there's yeah. so many other ways are problematic, but yeah. I have. Yeah. That's been nice. Okay, so this is a good time to wrap it up. Otherwise, it's going to be like a six-hour okay. intro. Um, so I would just let everybody know where to find us. Um, we are at professorsex.com backslash podcast. We're going to put all the links to everything in the show notes here. YouTube.com backslash professorsex. There will be the notes there. Um, there's information about us there. There's links to more stuff we're doing. Um, you'll get to know us more as we go because we really like to talk about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so. I'm an only child, so that's my excuse. No, I just like to talk. So I'm just like a, I'm like a textbook extrovert. Well, and that's what because you've guest lectured in my class before. That's what students have frequently said is they appreciate how you use yourself to kind of as a, a little self deprecating. Yeah, well, no, not self deprecating, <laughs> but but within the stories and within the education, mm. the way you use yourself. So I, I'm very I think, open. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what's that's been both um good and bad. Like uh in this process, I have. I'm very, very, very open. There is very little about me that cannot be discovered by just following me on social media. Yeah. Um, and some people hate that because we're not comfortable seeing all the details of someone's life all the time mm-hmm. because not everybody mm-hmm. is and not everybody has that expectation. But because I have an extreme amount of privilege, I have less to lose than other people mm-hmm. might by being as open and out about who mm-hmm. I am and my experiences. Um, the wor- I think my worst risk is I will embarrass my family members mm-hmm. occasionally, my poor children. Um, <laughs> they know what they signed up for. Um, <laughs> but uh, we talk about it a lot. But but I do. And that's that's been really great. And that's been but on, then on the flip side, sometimes people don't want to work with me because of how open I am. And sometimes, huh. you know, so it, it hasn't because, again, we're dealing with what we're trying to do is break this stuff down. Yeah. So we reduce stigma, yeah. we reduce shame. That stuff still exists. Yep. And so then you have somebody who walks in the room is like, let me tell you about my sex life. And people are like. We don't do that in the light company. Mm-hmm. And so if I was operating in a more progressive space, it might not be costing me what it cost me to do it here in the Bible Belt. Yeah. And so yeah. that's but I do. Sometimes I also tell client stories as if they're mine so okay. that I can get around confidentiality issues yeah. because it's, an, it's a good story that I think people can learn from. And so I'll just tell it like it's my own. So people sometimes think they know me and they don't. Yeah. But like, which is a little weird. But yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Because they, they have all these stories. Like, oh, we have all these stories. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. It's not totally. I'm not that yeah. exciting. <laughs> so <Same. but> yeah. <laughs> Lower the bar. Yep. So, okay, well, that's it. Um, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.